When talking about Finnish metal music, it doesn't take long for Children of Bodom to enter the conversation. The group were one of Finland's most internationally successful bands, while frontman Alexi Laiho inspired a whole slew of new metal musicians. Despite these merits, the story of Children of Bodom isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Rising to the top of the metal world through hard work, the band's long road to success was tragically cut short by the untimely passing of their leader. It's time to dive into the history of Children of Bodom and the undying legacy of Alexi Laiho. In 1993, Alexi Laiho decided to form a new band with his childhood friend, drummer Jaska Raatikainen. Calling themselves Inertheed, the two were soon joined by bassist Samuli Miettinen, who was replaced by Henkka Seppälä in 1995. Around the same time, the band's lineup was rounded out by guitarist Alexander Kuoppala and keyboardist Jani Pirisjoki. The group's early demos didn't cause much of a fuss until a small record label in Belgium offered Inertheed a deal. Soon the band entered the studio to begin recording their debut album, but not before letting Pirisjoki go. He was replaced by a friend of Raatikainen's, jazz pianist Janne Wiedermann. After completing their debut album, Inertheed were contacted by Spine Farm Records who offered them a recording deal. Because they were already signed, a new contract took some clever maneuvering. The band informed the label in Belgium that they had broken up, in reality however, they just sneakily decided to change their name. The group chose Children of Bodom as their new moniker, inspired by the infamous Lake Bodom murders from the 1960s. The band's debut album Something Wild was released in 1997, reaching number 20 on the Finnish albums chart, which took the band by surprise. At the time, Something Wild's eclectic mix of black metal, power metal and neoclassic shredding was something truly unheard of in Finland. As Chaos Zine later put it, despite some shakiness, General Bonus playing ability was evident from the very first album. Following the record's release, the band embarked on their first European tour with Hypocrisy, Covenant and Agatha Damon. In 1999, Children of Bodom released their second album, Hate Breeder, which surpassed their debut album by rising to number 6 in their native country. Additionally, Hate Breeder was the group's first album to chart in Germany. Years later, Chaos Scene would go on to tout the record as a classic of Finnish melodic heavy metal that has stood the test of time, still sounding fresh after all these years. Bodom's third album, Follow the Reaper, was released in 2000 and continued the band's strong upward momentum. Chaos Zine would later declare the album a Finnish metal classic that has undeniably helped shape and grow the metal scene in Finland and abroad. Children of Bodom had certainly created quite the buzz on the European metal circuit. Thus the band were ready to take the world by storm on their next album. Released in 2003, Hate Crew Death Roll proved to be the band's biggest success yet, reaching number one in Finland. The success was truly warranted, as Chaos Zine praised the album, saying that every song on it rocks. Following the record's release, Children of Bodom set out on their first North American tour. The path to world domination had just begun and the sky was the limit. However, an unfortunate surprise was waiting in the wings. Alexander Kuoppala announced mid-tour of his intention to leave the band. This took everyone by surprise. Though they had previously said that the band would break up if any member was ever to leave, they felt that they worked too hard for Children of Bodom to break up now. Thus, the band began searching for a new guitarist. Fortunately, they didn't have to look very far, as former Stone guitarist and Alex Laiho's synergy bandmate Prope Latvala offered to help. Latvala fit the band seamlessly, and Chinlo Bodum continued their journey towards global metal dominance. In 2005, Chinlo Bodum released their fifth album Are You Dead Yet, which was the band's first album to chart in the United States. Not surprising, as Chaos Scene later ranked the record among the band's best. General Bono were the talk of the town in 2005, and Alex Eli had made a name for himself as one of the premier guitarists of the era. A personal highlight for Laiho was when he graced the cover of Guitar World magazine with his idols Steve Vai and Zach Wilde. In 2006, Bodom hit the road with the Unholy Alliance tour, which featured metal giants Slayer, Lamb of God and Mastodon. Things took an unfortunate turn, however, when Alex Eli broke his shoulder while bowling. Because of this, the band were forced to cancel several shows in 2007. While Laiho's injury never fully healed, he made a strong enough recovery for Chinlo Bodom to begin work on their next album. The band's sixth record, Blood Drunk, was released in 2008. The album proved to be the band's biggest success, charting in 14 countries. Naturally, this led to the group's biggest tours alongside Megadeth, Slipknot and Cannibal Corpse. 
Despite all this, Blood Drunk wasn't a huge hit among critics. While it retained many of the elements of its predecessor, Chaos Scene put it best, stating, the songs just aren't quite as good and rarely do you feel a need to return to them. The response to Bottom's next album, 2011's Relentless Reckless Forever, wasn't much different, and the record has since gone down in history as even the band members' least favorite album. It seemed as though Children of Bodom had stagnated one way or another. Clearly the band were in the need for something new, or in this case, something old. The group's next album, 2013's Halo of Blood, returned to the band's roots, with more influences from black metal and other early favorites. This change in course clearly paid off, as Chaos Scene touted the album as the group's most diverse offering yet. Despite all the praise, not everything was fine behind the scenes. In 2015, Children of Bodom announced that they had parted ways with Rob Latvala. According to the band, Latvala's lack of motivation was the main reason for his firing, having missed several rehearsals. Latvala disagreed and has since described his firing as quite the stab in the back. Nevertheless, Children of Bodom soldiered on by recording their next album as a four-piece for the first time. Released in 2015, I Worship Chaos received its fair share of praise, but didn't exactly set the world on fire. Chaos Scene later remarked that everything's basically as it should be, but something's missing, while the album as a whole leaves a messy aftertaste. Be that as it may, Children of Bodom recruited guitarist Daniel Freyberg to its ranks and set out on another world tour. In 2019, the band released their 10th and ultimately last studio album, Hexed, which Chaos Scene described as equally riskless and safe as your basic logger. Was this an indication that Children of Bodom had run out of gas? Possibly, because later that year the band announced out of the blue their intention to break up. The group played their final show at the Helsinki Ice Hall on December 15, 2019. At the time, the reason for Children of Bodom's breakup was left up in the air aside from vague press releases. Seppälä, Virman and Raatikainen have since stated that the real reason for the band's disbandment was Alexi Laiho's alcohol abuse. In their early years, Children of Bodom made a name for themselves as quite the partiers. According to legend, the band's booze rider was the biggest in all of Europe. Things had mellowed out in the years since, but in 2016, Laiho returned to his old ways. Despite numerous attempts to get him to rehab, Laiho refused and soon his relationship with the other band members began to sour. Laiho even quit the group momentarily in 2018. Eventually, Seppälä, Virman and Raatikainen had had enough and decided it was time to bury Children of Bodo. Following the band's breakup, Laiho and Daniel Freyberg decided to form a new group dubbed Bodom After Midnight with Santa Cruz bassist Mitya Toivonen and Paradise Lost drummer Valtteri Väyrynen. Unfortunately, the band's time was cut short as Alex Elijah died on December 29, 2020 from alcohol-induced fatty liver disease and pancreatic fibrosis. Elijah's death came as a huge shock to the metal world and tributes were heard from several rock and metal icons, including Dave Mustaine and Steve Vai. Elijah's one song, Bottom After Midnight's Paint the Sky with Blood EP, was released in 2021. Children of Bodom's, and by extension Alex Elijah's significance to the metal world, is undeniable. The band were able to carve out their own path to success with an original sound that no other band has been able to emulate. Elijah also reinvented the guitar for a whole new generation in the same way Eddie Van Halen did decades earlier. Elijah's passing left a gaping hole in the metal world which will probably never be filled. Fortunately, we can find some solace in the fact that Elijah and the other members of Children of Bodom left us with a huge catalog of great music that continues to amaze even decades later. And really, when it all comes down to it, what more could a musician want from their career?